Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm taking a look at the PC release of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now this particular game, um, they're normally a benchmark as we all know for the Tomb Raider series. They normally have really good graphics and they don't normally seem too taxing on the hardware. So I thought before I actually started playing this game to any, any depth, I would have a quick run through all the options with you and then give you a benchmark of how it runs on a 6GB GTX 1060. It's got a mild overclock, as you can probably see in the corner there shortly. It's the Asus ROG edition, and it is running at its full overclock uh, factory range, if you like. I have tried pushing it further in this game on the overclock, and yeah, the game crashes. So the overclock was either too much, or the game doesn't like them. I've run overclocks before in other games, not a problem. This particular game didn't seem to like it. But there we go. Anyway, that's diversing. Um, on with just quickly go through all the options so just to show you guys what languages are available etc what sort of uh, graphics options we've got and it is pretty in depth um, this is the first time I booted it up apart from changing the volumes here as you can see now you've got different voiceovers uh, there we are. English no we haven't got different voiceovers you know I thought we had first time I've seen it myself no it's just English okay well we can switch that on and off what else have we got here audio channels 7.1 supported so yeah we've got some good features there guys as you can see you can actually go through the whole range so uh, nice audio there if you've got your nice surround system this is going to sound absolutely epic text language here we go i'll just quickly flip through these i don't want to dwell on the settings too long go all the way around to english there we go so i'll just flip through those if you need to subtitles on and off and uh, you've even got subtitle colors which is quite nice and environmental subtitles as well. Turn those off again. Uh, what else have we got? Push talk there, dynamic range. This has got some good options as well for saying that we've already got 5.1 and 7.1. We've also got headphones mid, home theater, low TV, etc. High. It's, it's a nice little range of options there for the sound. So if we just quickly flip back. What else have we got here? Gamepad, yeah. Obviously, being a Steam game, um, you're not really going to have a problem with your controller. DS4 works as well. Obviously, Xbox One pad works, Steam controller, etc. And yes, you can change quite a lot on that, as you can see. So if we go back to what we got, gameplay. There we go. We've got some bits and bobs there on gameplay. If I'm going too fast, guys, just pause the video and have a look at the separate menu if you really want to see something. Like I said, I don't want the video taking forever, boring everyone to tears, so uh, mouse, leaving graphics till last because obviously there's the most options on that. There we go. And then we've got, what else have we got? Key mapping. Yep, you can map absolutely everything as you would expect. Although, to be fair, if you played the other Tomb Raiders, all the keys as default make complete sense. You've got Toby Eye tracking there and obviously your account at the bottom. So if we go to display, the biggie if you like you've got a benchmark on this okay now when i loaded it in it did detect ultra wide straight away so it filled the screen straight away there was no issues there at all now dx12 it defaulted as on suppose that makes sense full screen yeah on and off an exclusive full screen on and off funnily enough um exclusive full screen let me use my overclock refresh ratio of this monitor which is 75 hertz so if you turn that on You've probably got the same option there. Monitor, yeah, depending on what you've got it plugged into. I plugged it into a 4K HDR TV and it detected the TV straight away and HDR work straight away. There was no problems with it. Just remember to toggle it in your Windows display options for HDR. You must remember to do that because obviously if it's completely switched off at Windows level, this game won't override it. You've got your brightness there. Your V-Sync is just a half refresh on and off. I'll leave it off so you can get a, a good idea of frame rate. Anti-aliasing, yeah, you've got, uh, oh, yeah, whatever, we know, we know, it's going to kill performance, there we go, so there's your options, yeah, I'll go with TAA. Uh, stereostropic filtering, you got side by side, you got off, etc. Now, I've got to be careful with some of these settings, I am still running a really archaic FX8350, it's running at 4.2, with 16 gigabytes of RAM at 1833, yes, it's on the top of my list to throw that in the bin and buy a high-end Ryzen processor just you know I'll get around to it one day mm. graphics <clears throat> yeah whatever let's just go there we go so 
Default highest gives you all these settings, as you can see. Now, that probably will cripple performance. I mean, I don't mind playing games at 30 FPS with fully maxed graphics. That's my preference. But if you want 60 FPS and you're running a 1066 gigabyte, you are going to have to drop some of these. Probably shadows, environment detail, the usual culprits that are, you know, sort of performance hogs. So there's high, and it actually changes the background picture if you watch carefully. It does drop. I mean, you can see, especially on the right here, we're on low at the moment, yeah? Lowest. Yeah, we've lost quite a lot. So if we go to highest. Did you see it fill everything in? Uh, so switch back to lowest. No, it's not going to let me do it, is it? I want to just go all the way. But you can see very easily the, the impact it's having. You probably will end up with a custom setup so what we're going to do is see how highest runs the game is installed on a 7200 speed normal hard drive and i'm recording to an ssd okay samsung one and windows 10 is on an intel ssd so it shouldn't hit impact performance too much obviously loading times could be sped up if you put the game on an ssd let's run the benchmark see how long it takes to load i'm normally going to get a two or three frames per second hit from using the recording software so just bear that one in mind and yeah this is the highest settings fully maxed let's see what it does hopefully it's going to run it in 21 b9 because we've dropped <laughs> to 16 b9 here let's see let's see what it does so what we're loading then anything in particular it's be an open scene won't it like the other tomb raiders where you I remember the other one you looked over a cliff and it sort of panned around your character let's see if this does the same sort of thing loading certainly taking a while i always think nowadays with a lot of modern games it's best to put them straight on an ssd um you know i mean i got away with um far cry 4 put that on a normal hard drive and that didn't seem affected at all but a lot of your modern stuff nowadays it's got to be ssd it just doesn't stream the stuff in fast enough to keep it going at a decent rate um yeah i mean we've got like the new division game coming out and stuff and that's definitely going to need you know an ssd and if you want to play at anything higher than 30 fps more than likely a better cpu and uh, what have you than this setup okay so this benchmark takes a while doesn't it here we go oh look at those fps numbers guys now this is maxed bear that in mind and i'm recording and on an ultra wide you're going to lose some fps because obviously you've got more real estate you've got more pixels going on screen than a normal 16 by 9 monitor that's that's actually doing better up to now than i expected to be fair 41 39 watch it plummet it'll be in the 20s in a minute cpu usage is not high not high at all no not too bad the game is designed to run on consoles as well, so maybe that's, uh, you know, some effect. GPU usage is high. In fact, it's, uh, it was topped at one point there, wasn't it? It was 99%. Ooh, that looks good. 39. 39 FPS. 37 FPS there, guys. 36. Yeah, I'll be locking this to 30 to play it and just maxing it out, taking the glory. Oh, that was a loading stutter if ever I saw one. You see the, the stutter there? That was loading. What I'm going to do in a minute is drop it to the all time lowest setting to see if we can hit 60 FPS, and that'll give you a rough idea as to where the game will go okay we did the full map drawing that's better <laughs> yeah ssd that's handling it much better it was all the uh transparencies and stuff going on in the jungle area by the look of it affecting it in the mid 40s nearly 10 gigabytes of normal ram used 5.6 gigabytes of vram used 
you want to bear that in mind if you've got like a, an old GTX 970 you've got three and a half gigabytes on that card so uh, watch your usage this game seems to love VRAM yeah that's pretty good actually that's that's quite nice performance for this sort of spec like I say the CPU is archaic so yeah Certainly, compared to a big open world game, you know, like the new AC game, um, Odyssey, you know, you, you, you're not going to run that maxed out and uh, even think about running it higher than 30 on this sort of setup. Again, good looking game. Okay, so here we go. We averaged, what, 41 FPS here. 96% um, GPU bound. Wow. You do like a 1070 then. I'm surprised, so the CPU wasn't really a problem. Okay, that's interesting. Everybody's you know racing ahead to get the new Ryzen's, etc. And what we got here, we got CPU, no render. Okay, so let's stick this on. Ooh, this is gonna be nasty. Lowest, yeah. And what we're gonna do now is watch that FPS and see if it keeps above 60. Because if you want a 60 game, personally, I don't really care, but if you want it. Let's go. Got to load it all again, hasn't it? Not good. Got it better to run the actual uh, in-game benchmark rather than physically try and play the game. Um, you know, it will give you guys an idea because obviously, when you're playing a game, there's a lot of a lot of things that aren't going to be the same. You'll be doing playing the game differently to me, doing different activities, etc. So at least this, you can you know run it yourself if you decide to invest in the game and buy the game. Um, you know what you're going to get it get into. You'll know your FPS. So we're on high 60s. Okay. You know it still looks good. It's a bit flat, but it still looks good. Not bad. I've seen worse looking games on the lowest, that's for sure. Like I say, I had a 2 or 3 FPS for the recording software doing its bit. And you might squeeze a little bit more out if you had it on SSD. Here we go, here's the killer scene. It's not, it's not the crisis, is it? It's not Crisis 3 of this generation. It's still doable, this is. When Crisis 3 came out, it absolutely crippled everybody's computer. It was hilarious. I remember trying to run it, and uh, it was a God, it was a nightmare. Well, to run decently. 70. Yeah. We're looking good. So, as we get some massive drops soon, I would say you could lock this to 60. Probably bump a little few bits up, you might want to do textures, because it looks a bit muddy. How much memory are we using? 2.6 gigabytes of VRAM. Okay, so that's not bad. If you've got a 3 gigabyte card, you should be able to, to get it going. Um, you got what, 8.7, just under gigabytes of normal RAM. So if you're using a eight gigabytes of normal RAM, you're gonna have some problems there. You're gonna have some major stutters. You want more, basically in this day and age. Still holding above sixty. Come on. Oh, fifty something. That's fine. It's not gonna be for very long. Fifty-three, fifty, fifty-three, fifty-two. Not going to hit a 40, is it? CPU now, obviously, a lot higher. We're nearly we're in the 90s now, look, for the CPU percentage to be expected. Well, we're doing okay. Quite a long benchmark. For me, it'll be 30 FPS, V Sync on maximum detail and just enjoy the artwork of the game as you go through it 
Okay, what are the results then? They are 67 average FPS. So, GPU bound, no, not at all. As you can see, 42% there. Video memory, 6 gigabytes. So, yeah, you probably you want to go texture quality, you know, probably pop that up a bit so the game looks better. And you'd probably be able to keep 60 FPS for what, 90% of the time? Who knows? I'll have a fiddle with it some more, but for myself, it's definitely going to be highest. And I'm definitely going to lock it to 30. Guys, I really hope this video is for, you know, some help for somebody out there. If you've got a similar sort of setup, and like me, you're waiting to upgrade your CPU, this game doesn't seem to be a problem. It's just your GPU. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.